this is my model wave. share with you guys my top recovery tips. The top tips that I have for recovery. Um, these are just the things that have helped me the most, um, that have been the most beneficial to me throughout my recovery. I'm still recovering, which most of you know I have not been out of treatment for that long. I'm still doing treatment just on an outpatient basis and it's going really well. I just thought that I would share that with you guys, um, give a little mini update. I'm doing super great. I just, I, I feel a lot more normal than I ever have. So that's good. I only see my therapist and dietitian every other week now and I was seeing them every single week. So yeah. Um, also, I have a good sleep schedule. I don't think that I've had one of those in like years. So moving on to the subject of the video. So my first tip is to be completely honest with yourself. Pay attention to all of the times when you're trying to justify behavior. Catching my eating disorder thoughts in the moment has been so, so helpful. Like I can't even tell you guys. It's been really, really great for me. And it does get fairly exhausting at times, I won't lie to you. Um, I do get kind of sick of doing that all the time, but the more you catch these thoughts, the less thoughts you have. That's what I've noticed. So it, over time, isn't as hard on you because you're not spending all day catching thoughts anymore because you have less of them. It does take a while to actually get in the habit of doing this regularly just because when you have thoughts like this that are eating disorder thoughts, they become so ingrained into your mind that it sometimes is hard to even notice that the thoughts are distorted in the first place. At first, you're just not going to catch everything and that's okay. Recovery is a long process, it takes time. Wanting recovery and actively doing things for your recovery is the most important thing, even if those things don't work 100% of the time. So for instance, I used to have all of these rules that I felt like I had to follow. And one of these rules was that I felt like I could not eat anything before I got weighed, whether this be at my dietitian's office, at the doctor's, or even in my own house when I got up in the morning. Because I wanted to know my true weight, whatever the hell that means, and I wanted them to know that as well for some reason. Doesn't really make sense. Although, you know, most of the things that you do when you have an eating disorder don't really make sense either. Anyways, even being this far into my recovery, I still, this far, it's not really that far in, but I, I feel like I've been working at it for a while. I can still catch myself at times thinking that I should follow these rules that I used to follow. Like, sometimes I'll think, oh, I have a doctor's appointment. I shouldn't eat before I go to the doctor's because I'm getting weighed. And that thought just kind of comes into my mind out of habit, I think. Um, but I don't let the thought go until I shut it down. Shut it down. So I will not move on from it. So I'll take a step back and I'll think of all of the reasons why doing that is a bad idea. When I was heavily in my eating disorder, I would take a while to convince myself why these behaviors that I wanted to do were a good idea. In recovery, I just do the opposite and I convince myself not to do those things. And I can't just think to myself, I'm not gonna do that and move on. I have to truly believe that that is not something that I'm going to be engaging in before I let myself move on with my day. And that has been so, so beneficial, you guys. It's been really, really helpful. So I really encourage you to try that out. And just the basic action of being able to differentiate which thoughts are distorted and which ones aren't is helpful. That in itself is a really good thing. My second tip is to be honest with others. If you have a dietitian or a therapist or both, tell them every little thing that you can think of that's on your mind that has to do with your eating disorder. It's difficult to get to this level of vulnerability, but 
after time, you get really used to it and it becomes really freeing. Every rule you've had, every ED thought or behavior that you've had, tell them. The ones that you can remember at least. <laughs> I know that you can pay attention to and remember every single one of them. That's a lot. Truthfully, like, I don't want to be thinking about every little thought that I've had that was related to my eating disorder all day either. That just sounds awful, but in the moment, tell them everything that you can think of. Just get those things off your mind. Eating disorders thrive off of secrecy and eliminating this aspect of it as much as possible is going to be really, really beneficial for your recovery. Number three is telling yourself it's fine. If you catch yourself doing this, then it is most likely not fine. Minimizing things is very, very dangerous in eating disorder recovery. If you brush everything off as not being a big deal, then the chances of relapsing are so much higher. But at the same time, having slip ups is okay. I want you to know that. I have at times felt like a failure if I messed up a little bit, but slipping up is better than never slipping up at all because slipping up is how you learn. That's how you grow and better your recovery. And I mean like slipping up on occasion, not slipping up constantly. Slip ups are a part of recovery. They're bound to happen. So don't give yourself a hard time when you do so because they are so, so, so normal and expected. Just make sure that you're using these slip ups as knowledge on how to progress rather than regress. Number four is setting some much needed boundaries with people. If you're anything like I was before I went to treatment, you might have very low self-respect and you just let people walk all over you. You might feel undeserving of having boundaries, but as much as you feel that you don't deserve them, set them anyways. Just do it. It's difficult and it is really, really hard on your mind to be doing something that you feel like you don't deserve, but you will grow to feel like you deserve it. You will, like that's what happened with me. And of course, I don't know your situation. Who's ever watching this? I don't know what's going on with you, but that's how it worked for me. And so I'm just sharing from my own personal experience. As I've said before, I am not a doctor. I'm not a therapist. I have no license to be giving you guys like hard facts and telling you how to live your life. This is all just meant to be taken as a suggestion. The more practice that you get with setting boundaries will actually help you gain a lot of self-respect and will help others respect you more as well. So it's a win-win. This is one of the absolute best things that you can do for yourself, whether you have an eating disorder or not, and is a great, great way to gain control without resorting to super unhealthy measures. This is a really healthy way of getting control. So do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it if you want, because it's just a suggestion. Number five, don't let yourself know your weight ever, as much as you can help it anyways. Recovery is gonna be so, so, so much easier if you don't know your weight throughout the process. This means getting rid of scales in your house, closing your eyes when you go to the doctors, or turning around if you don't think that you have enough willpower to close your eyes. If I accidentally see my weight, I will go into a huge spiral. And if I never would have seen my weight, I would have just continued on doing well. So what's the point? There is none. That's the answer. It fuels your eating disorder so much. That is the only point, And that's very counterintuitive to your recovery. So don't do it. It just feeds your eating disorder drastically. It's literally just a number. And without seeing that, living life is so much easier. My next tip, which is number six, I think is to practice opposite action. So for example, um, I was really, really sad one day. I came home and I was really depressed. And this is when I lived with my aunt and uncle when I was doing PHP at treatment, when I was just there for part of the day and then came back at night. I came home from treatment and I was just in this like weird depression and I went downstairs to my room and I was just gonna sleep for the rest of the day. I just did not want to engage in the world. And my cousin came downstairs and she was like, 
Hey, I want to dye my hair. Do you think that you could help me? Um, we're gonna go to the store to get my hair dye in a minute if you want to come. And I just told her that I'm sorry, but I don't really feel up to it right now. I'm kind of sad and I'm just gonna go to sleep. And she just was like, all right, went back upstairs and then Instead, I just got up out of bed and I went upstairs and I was like, all right, I'm coming with you. Even though that was the last thing that I wanted to do. And then the rest of my day ended up being so much better than what it would have been if I would have just stayed in bed. So doing this in similar situations or situations that are completely different um, is a really, really helpful thing. I highly encourage it. That made me look insane. I don't know what that was. I'm not crazy, I promise. For the most part, I'm not crazy. Um, anyways. Oh, did you hear that? I'm gonna go now. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will see you guys soon. I love you all. And I hope that you have a wonderful day. Love you. I already said that, but I'm just saying it again to let you know how true it is. Okay, thank you. I love you. Bye.